All right. Um, welcome to my talk, uh, The Devil's Bargain, Targeted Ransomware and Its Costs. Um, this was initially uh, put together for a more business -y audience, so I apologize that the first few slides are, are a little heavy on like charts and graphs and shit, but I've also added a section on um, the WannaCry ransomware because it's just so topical to anything on ransomware. Um, a little bit myself, I, I was a research scientist with Silence and previously that with malware analyst with Silence, currently between jobs, I was hit by those layoffs, unfortunately. Um, this is the structure of the talk. I'm going to start with some statistics and cover a few emerging trends in ransomware, then do a uh, section on one encrypt ransomware, and then there's a case study of uh, SAMHSA ransomware, which is a very good example of, uh, of targeted ransomware, where it's like, where they're, um, rather than, than um, distributing ransomware through like a massive phishing campaign, they're, they're actually targeting vulnerable JBoss servers and, and moving laterally in the network and shooting what files to encrypt. Anyway, um, 2016 was considered the year of ransomware because there's such an explosive growth in ransomware families. Uh, um, this trend will likely continue. It, um, it'll probably be even more in 2017, but um, ransomware really took off in 2014 with uh, CryptoLocker um, proving how successful the business model could be. It's since then been a very booming business. Here's the statistics. Uh, the business is attacked with ransomware every 40 seconds, and 51% of companies have have experienced a ransomware attack. 48% um, of these paid um, the ransom. The average paid about $2,500, but 20% of those that paid the ransom never got their files back. And less than half of ransomware victims fully recover their data, even with backup. So prevention is really crucial, um, if possible. Um, $209 million was paid to ransomware criminals in the first quarter of 2016, with estimated $1 billion in all of 2016. Uh, and this considered that not all ransomware incidents are reported because you don't necessarily want the bad press. Uh, this is a survey of companies, uh, how recently they're affected by ransomware. But um, as you can see here, the most common uh, way of, um, of spreading ransomware is phishing or social engineering or insecure spoofed websites. But there is a growing trend towards um, like an ex uh, spreading by an exploit, um, like in the case of stamps to ransomware using JBoss uh, exploit to get on that system, uh, and then um, I'll, I'll get onto that. Um, consequences of ransomware attacks. Uh, a lot of companies um, have to invest in new security technologies. They lose money on downtime. This is probably less interesting to this crowd, but. Um, um, one emerging trend is the targeted, targeted attacks, um, targeting data intensive organizations of medical practices, law, and architectural firms. Um, victims of target attacks tend to pay higher ransom, they're tailored to the target. Um, another emerging trend is ransomware as a service. Um, this lowers the technical hurdle for cyber criminals to get started. Um, uh, you may have be familiar with Petya and Misha, that, that was that ransomware that had the the skull and crossbones logo that was kind of retro. Uh, it, it got uh, rebooted as a ransomware as a service, where basically um, what it is is the infrastructure is already in place and people can sign up to be affiliates and just distribute ransomware and get a cut of the profits. Uh, Satan ransomware as a service is uh, another good example of that. Uh, walks people through the steps of making a dropper even. Like, it, it takes negligible technical skill to to start infecting people with ransomware and profiting from it. I think they start with a 70% cut of uh, the ransom. Um, uh, here's um, some headlines of ransomware incidents. Um, uh, you may have from been familiar with the time uh, ransomware hit the San Francisco train system. Everyone rode for free um, until it was um, it was paid. Um, a lot of hospitals get attacked by ransomware. Uh, another 
Um, another uh, case that um, got a lot of press was uh, when an electronic door locking system in an off-street hotel was infected with the ransomware. Now, originally, people were saying that people got locked in their rooms and couldn't leave until the ransom was paid, but that wasn't true. It was actually, um, they just couldn't make new key cards. But um, it was more amusing when people thought they were getting locked in their rooms. But, um, here's another example of targeted attacks. Um, uh, ransomware, um, basically, people are scanning um, the internet for vulnerable database, MongoDB instances, and um, and automating attacks like uh, one hacker, Kraken Zero, was able to wipe out 15,972 databases and demanding one Bitcoin in return for data. But there's absolutely no guarantee the databases are copied before being wiped. I mean, it, it seemed like it would be kind of costly to do that. Um, um, and the attack methodology has recently been expanded to vulnerable MySQL databases. Um, uh, Self-propagating ransomware. You've all heard of WannaCry. Um, uh, first struck in May 12th, and the first notable instance of a ransomware worm. I I doubt there was never ever been another ransomware worm, but it's the first time one made a huge splash. Um, and it was using the NSA's uh, Eternal Blue exploit and the Double Pulsar backdoor. Um, uh, the spread of the worm was initially halted when um, uh, malware tech um, registered the kill switch domain. It was basically this um, this, this domain looked like a random um, generated string that the um, the ransomware was calling out to before encrypting files. And when um, malware tech noticed this when he was sandboxing the ransomware, um, it was hitting a bunch of national uh, health service sites in, in the UK um, that it was calling out for that um, domain so he registered it and apparently it when, it when it's able to contact that domain it doesn't encrypt it was a kill switch so um, it propagates by um, by scanning the internet for 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 uh, for uh, IP addresses that have open uh, port 445 um, and are running vulnerable uh, SMB um, that the Eternal Blue exploit could be used on. And um, it also will scan the local area network with um, another thread. Uh, there's a pretty good write-up of it and by Malwarebytes that goes through all this. Um, there's also um, a really great infographic on the, um, the execution flow by Amanda Rousseau, uh, Ma um, Malware Unicorn is her handle. It's definitely worth looking up. Um, it didn't fit in one of these slides, otherwise I would have shown it. Um, um, since the registration of the kill switch domain, there's, there's been various variants showing up that either will look for a different kill switch domain or sometimes even have the kill switch uh, patched out, but there hasn't really been one that's fully functioning um, without a kill switch yet. And the one that Kaspersky found early on, the ransomware archive was corrupted. I guess it was a failed uh, attempt to make one without a kill switch. Um, but what is interesting as far as attribution is concerned, there have been variants that have been found that appear to be earlier um, versions that don't use the eternal blue exploit. Um, they're using other SMB exploits and tools uh, associated with North Korea's Lazarus group. Now, this is very tentative because um, attribution is hard, but um, um, the Grug has a good article on, on reasons why it could actually be North Korea's Lazarus group uh, behind this uh, Wanna Cry worm. Uh, there's code that's unique to the Lazarus backdoor and also the command control protocol of Wanna Cry. Um, Symantec discovered Lazarus Link tools and early variants of WannaCry collocate on the same computer. Um, Russia was hit hard by this worm, which implies it wasn't Russia. Um, and um, as I mentioned earlier, earlier versions of WannaCry that don't propagate by the Eternal Blue exploit, um, which appears to be just copied out of a bunch of uh, Python scripts. And, um, 
Now, SANSA ransomware is um, a, good, a good example of a ransomware that's spreading in this, this other um, methodology of uh, what, what the attackers do is they um, find uh, vulnerable JBoss web servers and then use this tool, JXBoss, it's kind of a Metasploit-like interface, and they use that to compromise the JBoss servers, and then they, um, they move laterally in the network, see what files might be um, valuable to hold for ransom, and then encrypt them and have a, uh, a ransom tailored based on what they think it's worth. Whereas usually ransomware will, will um, um, will usually um, just charge a ransom that's it's kind of like the average that people will be able to um, to, um, to pay, be like 300 and 300, 600 bucks. But um, um, but with targeted attacks, you, you get like ransoms uh, in, of of like twelve hundred dollars, um, and and they'll be ransoming the, an, an entire network rather than just individual computers. Um, something that's uh, to notice is that. A lot of these CVEs that are used um, um, to, to spread the SAMHSA ransomware are really old, like 2010. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's amazing how long these things go without being patched. Um, uh, we'll probably be, it's the reason why we'll probably be seeing uh, the WannaCry ransomware popping up every once in a while, is it's gonna be a long time before all that's patched. Um, they also used, um, this this utility called Regeorge to to uh, tunnel over HTTP uh, and usually a script the um, script the removal of uh, shadow co copies of backups um, um, and um, and that's becoming more common too. Um, and, and they just um, leverage uh, S delete to, um, to self delete after they're done. And um, in usually uh, run out of scripts using PS exec. This is uh, um, the, the ransom message people see. Um, so, there's just some general precautions um, um, about ransomware, like stable macro scripts from uh, files transmitted by email. Um, it's usually disabled by default, but um, rarely backup data and verify integrity of those backups. Um, always keep software update on endpoints, or operating systems, browsers, Java, or Flash. Um, implement the principle of least privilege and configure access controls accordingly. Um, and um, categorize data based on organizational value, implement physical logical separation of networks and data for different organizational units. So, like, if you've got more val um, valuable data, you, um, you should probably have in a different um, segment of the network than your email environment that might be the first to be compromised. Uh, implement application whitelisting, only allow systems to execute known and permitted programs. And, uh, um, and just educate employees and IT teams about things like links and uh, malicious links and attachments and unsolicited emails. And only don't download software. It's really free option. You don't know and trust. Um, pre 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 prevention is key. Because uh, storing from backup is time consuming and costly. Uh, and again, less than half of ransomware victims fully recover the data even with backup. Another thing to check out is the Noah Ransom Project. Um, it was uh, started by the collaboration of Dutch National Police, Europol, uh, Intel Security, and Kaspersky Lab. Uh, so one of the first steps, if, you, if, if your systems are uh, are infected with ransomware, is to check if there's been a decryptor written. Um, for it, um, you'd find there's a no more ransom, but usually that's not the case. But um, there's also just various information. That you can find there, but. 
Uh, I'm sorry, that was kind of a mess, but but that's all I got. Yes. I've I've heard that. Um, not entirely sure, but um, sometimes um, sometimes it does still run uh, um, when it's um, on a network where, um, that's connected to the internet by proxy and can't reach it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one thing people speculate that the kill switch is for. Um, yeah? I I don't think the source for uh, WannaCry is up on GitHub or anything like that so far. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard there was one that was like in JavaScript or something. But. Well, um, not not as much. I mean, one thing that has been making uh, ransomware um, spread of the phenomenon is 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 these uh, ransomware the service things like uh, like um, that I covered earlier because that 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 requires doesn't even require somebody to understand the source code. It it like steps people through the steps of making a dropper that. All they need to know how to do is write a phishing email, really. Um, Anything else? All right.